So the kids were put on the gluten-free casein-free diet for at least four weeks so that we were sure that they were free of gluten and casein and anything that could have been in their system was removed from their system. And then what we did is weekly we provided them with a snack that either had gluten in it, casein, both or neither. So we literally would go to their houses um, or their daycare and we would bring them the snack for that day that would contain either both products, a placebo, um, or one or the other. And we would have the kids consume either um, a beverage that would have casein in it or a pudding that would have casein in it, um, sometimes a smoothie depending on what the child would accept. And then our gluten containing products were either something along the lines of brownies, uh, um, chocolate chip cookies or banana bread and so each week they would have that snack and one week um, if it were a gluten containing uh, time they would have a banana bread that contained gluten if it was a time when gluten wasn't supposed to be in the snack they would have a gluten-free banana bread that was delivered to them. Well it's a lot of testing testing to make these things indistinguishable but we developed several recipes that we relied on. We did extensive testing. We would give them to people every day on the, when we were baking or, or concocting things and we would give them to the staff members here and ask them, can you tell the difference? We would, Do you know what this is? And for the most part, people would say, we can't tell which is which. So we developed a few recipes we stuck with and and they worked out well during the study. When we spent a lot of time in the kitchen testing foods, we needed to make products that were very similar, tasted the same, looked the same, and felt the same, smelled the same, because many of these kids would actually smell the products as well. So we spent a lot of time in the kitchen identifying and creating um, items that, were, that looked alike and tasted alike. So we would create a banana bread that contained gluten and then one that did not. And we would do taste tests with the staff on the Clinical Research Center. So we would ask them about taste. Did they taste any different between one brand or one product or the other? Um, did it um, taste good to them? Would they eat it? And could they identify w uh, whether one was gluten-free or, or, um, or contained gluten? And um, we did, I think, an excellent job at, at disguising the gluten and the casein in these products. And it was week to week, and when we provided a beverage, for instance, it would be in a um, a cup that was typically closed and they wouldn't be able to see that anyway. So that was another way that we disguised it. But they, if they happened to open it, they looked identical. Many relationships with the families and with the children and um, some of the children, they, would, they would, were always excited the day that Robin came because I would come with cookies and I would come with drinks. So they were always um, waiting for me. Um, I learned a lot about kids and how to get them to eat the challenge. We wanted them to consume at least half of the challenge of each type so that we were ensured that they had enough in there that may elicit a response. So we went to we went to the allergy literature and made sure that we were giving them enough that, that would elicit a, re a response. So I had to coax children. I would give them stickers or I we would be able to play with a certain plastic animal or toy or whatever to try to get them to do that. So it's, you know, it could take anywhere from, you know, 15 minutes to get this accomplished or I would be sitting there for a half an hour, 45 minutes just to, to get this, this accomplished. From this study of 14 kids where it was tightly controlled, um, I, we didn't find that the diet um, provided um, a great deal of benefit in terms of behavior which I know a lot of families were hoping to see. And um, not to say that there are not particular individuals that might respond to the diet. And I think that if families decide to do a trial of the diet, that they need to do it carefully and they need to do it with the help of a registered dietitian and making sure that their physician also knows that they're doing this, just so the, page, the, the child can be monitored for nutrition adequacy or deficiencies, ensuring vitamin D is adequate, ensuring that iron status is adequate, and you really need the support of a nutritionist as well as a, a doctor to be able to do that.